You are looking live at Bank Michigan Stadium in beautiful Detroit, Rock City for tonight's SFL matchup between the Canton Classics and the Motor City V8. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. I'm Cameron Duty, along with my partner, John Warren. John, we're looking at playoff implications for Canton in today's Battle of the Golden Dog Bone. It's simple, win and you're in, but standing in their way is a Motor City team that would love to play spoiler. What have you got for us, friend? Well, you know, big spoilers are usually on fast cars, and that's what Motor City wants to be today. Even though they're two and seven, this fan base should be excited about this young core. King Jackson and the rest of the squad always play with a lot of fight in them. And the more experience they have in big game moments, the scarier they're going to be. Speaking of scary, Canton has been downright terrifying this season, dominating the line of scrimmage, playing mistake-free football en route to an 8-0 start. Like you said, they can clinch a playoff berth with a, win today, with a win today and the division with some help tomorrow. I'm expecting a good one, Cameron, and I'm happy to be here. Hey, good to be with you. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. We know we're going to have a fun time, and you know what? This is anybody's game. It's March Madness, after all, and anything <laughs> can happen in the SFL. Thanks for being with us, folks. Kickoff is coming up next. We'll start this game with a touchback, and we will say hello to the Motor City offense. Quarterback King Jackson, the halfbacks Toroneo Rivera and B.B. Blitz, the fullback Christopher Dean, wide receivers Johan Sutherland and Hrana Queen Jackson and Shane Kaufman and Guy Clawson. You'll be seeing them as well. Tight ends Azami Mahata, Julian Gusters, and Phil Koss. The tackles Bill McMillan, Phil McMillan, and the center John Smith. First and ten go the V8s. With a little toss to the left side and a stiff arm from fullback Christopher Dean. He's got good, good running room to begin this drive, a nine-yard gain. Christopher Dean gets uh, some of the most carries of any fullback in the league, and that was a really good start for this offense, just bouncing out to the outside, getting a stiff arm en route to a nine-yard gain. So good start for Motor City. I think you and I will both agree that that is something that is critical for their success in this game today. Get off to a hot start. Don't let Canton get the upper hand. We will talk more about that as we go on. Second and one with Jackson under center. They keep it on the ground to B.B. Bullitt, who gets the first down. And let's say hello real quick to those Canton Classics defenders. Um, defensive ends, Mike All and Jabril Curse. The defensive tackles, L.L. Volt and Neil Rivers. The linebackers, Mark Gronick, D.J. Kilgunen, Kevin Brackett, and Dimitri Monzuma. The cornerbacks, Evan Lacey, Frank Bernstein, Joshua Durr, Diedrich Law, and the free safety, Kanye Rockefeller, and the strong safety, King Jamal. First set of downs for Motor City. They once again stay on the ground. The third featured running back of the evening. That is Torneo Rivera, second and nine. That's obviously early, right? But Motor City is interested in getting this running game in a rhythm. Take a little pressure off of the rookie King Jackson, who is going to be an amazing SFL quarterback. But obviously, rookie year, some ups and downs. Jackson to throw, pressure coming, stands in there, delivers a shot across the middle, and it is broken up. A nice defensive play that time by number 22, King Jamal. We'll be talking about him quite a bit this evening, I have a feeling. Yeah, King Jamal is just always everywhere on defense for this Canton Classics team. Uh, has a lot of pass breakups so far this year. Put his shoulder right in the chest of the receiver, broke it up, and uh, no gain. Both Kanye Rockefeller and King Jamal are tied with four interceptions on the season as well. And that's another thing we'll talk about um, with Jackson at quarterback here, being very careful, very selective of your passes. A lot of defenders out there quick to snag those out of the air. As he goes to the air, that is a notch completion right at the midfield stripe to Johan Sutherland for a first down. Yeah, I can see how soft it was in the middle. It was a really good decision by King Jackson. Receivers kind of drew some of the defenders further back into the field. In the middle, soft. Look at all that distance there. Right at midfield, Kent makes the tackle. So a nice new first down for Motor City. Good start for King Jackson. Absolutely. Motor City, King Jackson coming into this game. He is 52 
percent completion percentage and uh, six, over 1,600 yards and eight touchdowns on the year. They keep it on the ground once more to Bolitz, or excuse me, that's Rivera. Uh, nothing doing, Gronick with the tackle. Yeah, and, and it's probably too early to be talking about time of possession. We're only two minutes into the game, but Canton dominates the stat. They're number one in the league, and so you have to think Motor City's thinking, hey, let's kind of flip the script on them, slow things down, and dominate the ball if we can. A very methodical drive that has them at midfield. Will it continue the pass? Off the hands of the intended target. Good coverage again by the defense. That's Evan Lacey there that was able to knock that one away and a big third down coming up. Yeah, I'm, I'm being the nitpicker here because he's, he's, again, a very talented young quarterback, but needed to get that out just a half second faster and with more zip on it. That would have been a connection. To the air once more, scrambles to find some extra room, and that is hit by Evan Lacey, I believe. No, King Jamal, actually, and we just talked about him. Good with deflections and good with INTs. Dangerous throw, and Motor City will have to punt this one away. Yeah, Canton's so good at just getting their arms up in the secondary. Once it's out of the quarterback's arms, they're looking around to try to bat that ball in the air, do a tip drill, and Canton is happy to be coming away with the punt attempt here and get the ball for the first time. That kick will be fielded right around the 20-yard line. Ouch. And start, yeah, big hit. And they'll start from the 22. So let's say hello to the Canton offense as they make their way out onto the field. Quarterback Scar Patterson leads the squad. Halfbacks Robert Johnson, Logan Lee. We'll see both of those tonight, as well as fullback Bill Cherry. The wide receivers, Ryan Owens, Andrew Gibson, Al Dillapree Sr., Bob Lung, the tight end, Jack Wall, and the tackles, Jacques Le Pancake and Max Van Linga, the guards, Adam Chance, Girth Lord, and the center, Kara Kilgan. Now on first down from the 22-yard line. Highly potent offense, ready to go to work. Slings it, and that is complete right off the bat to midfield to Jack Wall for the first down. Jack Wall is a leading receiver in terms of yards for Canton. Just a, a dynamic player at the tight end position. One of the most dynamic tight ends in the league. Scar Patterson, one of the most accurate quarterbacks in the league. They don't ask him to do a lot. He is an impressive quarterback, but they're not asking him to win games all the time. They rely on this backfield. So getting him in rhythm early with Jack Wall is probably a pretty good thing for this Canton offense. Three-headed tandem in the backfield that works for sure. We mentioned earlier is the battle of the Golden Dog Bone, and today the Classics are sporting a throwback from the 1920 Canton Bulldog team. Ooh. That pass almost intercepted. A good defensive play by the Motor City V8s. Sammy Seatbelt the third. I had to adjust my seatbelt on that play. I was <laughs> I was about to get up out of my chair as that was going six the other way, but Sammy Seatbelt could not come away with it. Scar Patterson, we just talked about his accuracy. He was lucky to get away with that one. Buckle up indeed. Second and 10 coming up now. And this Motor City defense. Looking primed to make another stop if they can. Again, we talk about points. We talk about Canton able to do a very good job in that. And the pressure coming, but this time it's Motor City who gets the upper hand. Nicholas Warner with the sack. Yeah, safety blitz coming down the pipe here. Uh, Scar Patterson didn't like what he saw downfield. He pumped. He held on to it, thought he could get away with another few seconds, but not to be. That sets up a big third and long here in midfield. Nicholas Warner also very dangerous with interceptions. He has three on the year, a pick six to go along with that, and we've just seen a sack as well. So a very formidable opponent for Canton today, this defense going to work against the classics and the pressure was there he gets rid of it Patterson throws that is incomplete intended for Jack Wall but they force a fourth down you can see there Scar Patterson just ran out of time I honestly it kind of looked like the last play too he didn't like what he saw downfield instead of holding on to this one he actually lets it go probably a dangerous pass Jack Wall could not come down with it and now Motor City is going to get the ball back after holding Canton to a punt Charles Brown in to punt for the Classics. As one man awaits deep. A little bit of a low snap there. Had to pick that one up off the ground. Still a good kick. 
That Ooh. is going to take a really nice bounce for the Classics, and they're going to down it inside the five next to the goal line, and it doesn't get more pretty than that for uh, special teams here. What a, what a delicious bounce that was for uh, Canton in that punt. That was, uh, that was a really satisfying straight in the air. Great punt, pinning King Jackson deep. We'll see what the rookies got on what would be a massive, what, 96-yard drive if they end up with a touchdown. Yes. King Jackson certainly in an area where he wants to protect the football. He has 16 INTs on the season. They keep it on the ground again to the fullback, Christopher Dean. He has got more running room. He's come out of the gate looking strong today. Yeah, and this offensive line has just been primed to, you know, get the run going. And that was also some really great individual effort from Christopher Dean, breaking that initial tackle to get out wide and get out of the shadow of the end zone. So, could not ask for a better first and first and ten from the uh, the shadow of your end zone. Christopher Dean coming through, a wise play call, and it pays off in big dividends. Gets them back out to the twenty yard line. First and ten, a fast moving first quarter. King Jackson to throw, quick out, and that is incomplete. Intended for his wide receiver there. I, I believe that that was uh, Jackson, the intended target. Good job by Canton. Yeah, it's something that I've noticed a couple times calling Motor City games is that King Jackson likes to spread the ball out. You can see it on the stat sheet, too. A lot of different players get looks. A lot of different players get receptions. There's no one go-to, which can be a good thing and a bad thing. So we'll see how that develops as the game goes on. Again, back to the air. This time he dumps it off to the fullback, Christopher Dean. And Christopher Dean, really good job today of whether he's catching passes or he's running on the ground of shaking tackles and another burst of speed, if you will. He is tough to bring down, uh, you know, especially in the backfield, especially, uh, especially off tackle. But if he gets ahead of steam in space after catching the ball, ooh, good luck. So that was another great way to use Christopher Dean in this offense. It makes this third and two much more manageable. Sending a man in motion, that is Shane Kaufman coming to the bottom of your screen there on the left side of King Jackson. We'll see if he looks in that direction. Instead, they play it safe, keep it on the ground with Rivera, and it's going to be close, and they're going wow. to say he didn't get it. Stop short, and you can thank Diedrich Law and company for that. Yeah, I've actually thought Motor City has gotten a couple of generous spots so far in this game, and that was actually a pretty close one. I think they got it right, but fourth and inches from this part of the field means they're going to punt the ball. So, again, another good job by a Canton defense that – has had moments of brilliance as well this season. This punt crosses the 50, will be fielded around the 30 at the 35-yard line where Canton will take off. Folks, if you're new to the Simulation Football League, let's just say welcome. The SFL is football for everyone. Get off the sideline and start your player today by joining our Discord server at simulationfl.net. Just click the Join the Community button and begin your career or just to meet the stars of the SFL on and off the field. That's an option, too. It's never too late to get involved. This Canton offense now looking to get involved on their second drive. It started out promising before stalling out around midfield. They go with a tossed play to number 41, Logan Lee, for about five. Let's quickly say hello to the Motor City defense. The defensive ends, Dakota Butts and Maurice Williams. Defensive tackles, Doug Howard and Mo Biggins. The linebackers, Rodney Panani, King McNeely. The cornerbacks, Sammy Seatbelt III, Terrence Pearson and King Rashid. And the strong safeties, Mark Kaufman, Nicholas Warner, Kane Vasquez. And there on the ground, you see Bill Cherry, making his way, rumbling, bumbling, stumbling for a first down. Well, Ken, looking at the fullback play, Christopher Dean, and saying, all right, let's get Bill Cherry involved. Why not? We've got a really dominant backfield. You just saw Logan Lee with a great carry. Uh, so why not get Bill Cherry involved? Two really talented backfields in this game today. You alluded to it earlier in the game that they rely on that three-headed tandem in the backfield featuring Robert Johnson, Logan Lee, and as we said, Bill Cherry. They combine for the number one rushing team in carries, yards, average rush, and touchdowns. But look at the ground game into effect. That is Dillipree coming up with a big-time catch. First and ten, they're moving the chains. That's a perfect encapsulation of why Kent has been dominant, dominant this year. They, they lull you into a sense of, okay, we got to stop the run, we got to stop the run, and then bam, 
you, you have Dillapri, you have Owens, you have Jack Wall. Great receivers that Scar Patterson finds with ease when this run game run game gets going. Scar Patterson second in completion percentage. He's going into today's game. He was 114 for 179, so he is very, very accurate. As you said, protects the football well. Now, handoff that time to Lee. He spins out of one tackle, but is stopped after about a one-yard gain. Yeah, stopped by Rodney Panani there, who leads this team, co-leads this team, and tackles with Kane Vasquez, 64, now 65 for Panani. Second and nine as we approach three minutes left, and as we said, a fast-moving first quarter. They got good penetration that time, the uh, Motor City V8s did, but it's Johnson busting through the line as well for a nice game. Yeah, Johnson's lucky that he got a full head of steam heading into that line because, yeah, a defender got right in the backfield almost immediately, so turning a, a po potential negative into a positive there. I mean, you know, Motor City, we mentioned two and seven coming in, but they are fighting hard today. They know the formidable op opponent they have, and take a look at that. Touchdown, Canton, Jack Wall. What a strike down the middle of the field. Yeah, Jack Wall is just a super reliable target for Scar Patterson. We've already seen a couple of great catches today. Just a good route runner, just a, a, a speedy tight end, tough in the middle, really, really tough to defend, whether you're a safety, a linebacker, or even a cornerback. So just a really powerful weapon for Canton to have, and they go up, hopefully for them, 7 to nothing here in the second. Rob M's on to attempt the extra point to try to tack on another point to what would be a seven-point lead. And that kick is good. So, six plays, 65 yards. As you see, just a little over two minutes there before Patterson was able to connect with Jack Wall on a strike. And Canton leads seven to nothing. And that's even a pretty brisk uh, uh, drive for them. They sometimes draw that out, but this one had a couple of big strikes one to Dillapri, that was the big one, and then Jack Wall with the touchdown. This kick end over end will be down in the end zone. So Motor City will come out to the 20-yard line. And, and where do you go from here, John, if you're the Motor City offense? You've seen some nice glimpses, but not able to put anything together just yet. You know, you're, you're a 2-7 and seven team. You're trying to figure some stuff out. I alluded to how much King Jackson spreads out the ball. It'd be nice if they can figure out who his go-to is. Maybe just take some shots. Take some shots at Hirona Queen Jackson downfield. Something that can get a fire started. And there you go. And a nice job of adjusting to make the catch that time by number 45 on, on, the, uh, on the reception. That is Julian Gusters. Yeah, and Julian Guster is part of a three-headed tight end unit. Uh, like I said, they spread this ball out a lot. Not one of those tight ends is really the dominant one. They're all very close statistically and with their targets by King Jackson. Sending a man in motion. That is another one of the tight ends right there. Azami Mihata from right to left. And Jackson keeps it on the ground this time with BB Bullets. Third and two on the way. B.B. Belitz was uh, an incredibly impressive player in the SFLM. Has not really had a great rookie season behind Toronero Rivera, Rivera but uh, he is someone that has shown flashes, and hopefully he's someone who can uh, turn into quite a player for Motor City going forward. Third and two, and they again keep it on the ground and stop once again about a yard short. And this can defense, what more can you say? Diedrich Law in with another big stop. That's going to be disheartening. Oh. Yeah, they're they're going to throw a challenge on this. Again, I, I've seen a few spots in this game so far. I, I would scratch my head at, maybe take another look at. This one was awfully close. I thought in real time, Blitz got the first, but we're going to take another look. We'll take a look at that knee. A retroactive look at the play presented by Retroid. Get your SFL console at goretroid.com. Tough angle to see right there if indeed this will be this a really is, good, a good angle. Yeah, this is it. Does he get the ball over before the knee touches? Was he outstretched past the sticks? We'll find out. And you're right. Overturned a very good eye there, John. Yeah, all you need is the nose of the football to be touching that line, and that is a first down. So 
good challenge by Motor City to keep this drive going. I mean, that's the most important thing. They're they're down seven against the best team in football right now. They they've got to have some kind of momentum, some kind of spark to keep this drive going and keep their keep their hopes up. It's an indication right there that Motor City knows just how important it was to keep that drive alive, as you said, to, mm -hmm. to maintain possession of the football. First and ten. They stay on the ground with Dean. Another good handful of yards, second and seven. And you can see Canton start to tighten up on defense, too, in terms of you know stopping the run. They know that King Jackson has struggled with finding that one target that can take over a game, so they're not as fearful of finding that target. They want to stop the run, make sure that Torneo Rivera, Rivera and Christopher Dean don't, don't get started. I throw that time. Good pocket. King Jackson delivers across the middle to Phil Koss, one of those tight ends we talked about. Yeah, Phil Koss uh, leads that tight end unit in receiving yards and receptions. Just a big, big target and a reliable target for King Jackson. Talk about being methodical. This is a very methodical drive for Motor City. They are good at doing that when they do find success. It may not be in huge bombs or shots down the field, but it's chip, chip, chipping away at things as they're doing here as they're getting ready to approach midfield just past the 40 to the 41. So first and 10, new set of downs for Motor City. We're winding down this first quarter. They keep it on the ground to Christopher Dean, who runs into a brick wall, cuts back inside, and gets two before being stopped by Monzuma. Yeah, too much traffic in the backfield. Christopher Dean could not really figure out how to get around that cluster went back inside by the time he did he was stopped by Monzuma will we get one more play two receivers at the bottom of your screen it's a toss play and wow. absolutely snuffed out I think Motor City's probably wishing they didn't run that play before the end of the first Big time stop right there BB Blitz on wow. the carry and take a look at that John Kevin Brackett on the stop Kevin Brackett, they just had that perfectly scouted. That brings us to the end of the first quarter. Canton leading seven to nothing. You're watching the Simulation Football League on YouTube. Don't go anywhere. My name's Cameron Duty with my partner, John Warren. We want to thank Andrew Gibson and Dakota Butts working the stats truck tonight. And Cameron Irvine on the production side of things. We'll be hearing from him soon, I'm sure, with game breaks and such as the game goes on. Right now, Motor City trying to keep their drive alive as we switch sides of the field. They are at about the 39-yard line here. To throw the pass incomplete, that was third down, and they will have be forced to punt once more. Well, I love the trust that King Jackson has. I mean, it wasn't a great uh, pass, but it was a 50-50 ball. Gave Shane Kaufman a chance to go up and grab it. Shane Kaufman right. is the team leader in receptions and reception yards. So uh, I don't hate the call. Just couldn't come away with it, and they've got to punt it again. So once again, another punt for Motor City. This one is away cleanly, and it will be fielded around the 25 and stopped right there in his tract, and that is where Canton will take over. That was actually a nice tackle by Kane Vasquez on the punt return. Yeah, it was. It was. I'm surprised I haven't seen a single fair catch so far in this game. A lot of fielded punts and uh, uh, return people getting absolutely crushed uh, upon upon catching the ball. So I wouldn't be surprised to see some fair catches down the line. They're hitting hard tonight here in the Motor City. Canton sending a man in motion. That's Gibson going from left to right. Three receivers now at the top of your screen. One man in the backfield. And it's a rollout. Patterson looking. And it is complete. Look at that one hand that tucks it in, Al Dillapri Sr. God, that was a beautiful rollout. He had all the time in the world once he rolled out to the, the near side. Just, you know, absolutely perfectly delivered pass. Wow, what a catch. You're exactly right. I had not even clocked that that was a one-handed catch until that replay. Dillapri having a, a phenomenal day so far. Mark Hoffman there with the tackle. Just a little too late, though. 
you no know, receiver should look that comfortable. <laughs> right. And handoff this time to Lee, and he goes for it about nine, almost ten. They're going to mark him just short, second and inches now on the way. Take a look at the replay here, John. What a great effort of uh, Logan Lee on that one. That was. Second and inches now. Just crossed midfield. Canton wanting to put some separation between themselves and the V8s on this drive. The carry to Johnson. <laughs> Makes a man miss. That was a thing of beauty. First and ten now. New set of downs for the Classics. Robert Johnson's just making that look so easy. Living legend Robert Johnson just shaking off that tackle, getting to the second level. Moving the sticks for Canton. I mean, it's just it's so tough to plan for a backfield as good as Canton's. Eight seasons in the league for Robert Johnson. Four of them have been spent right here in Canton. And on first down, there is the toss play to Lee. Shrugs the tackle as well. He says, listen, Rojo can do that, and I can too. Second and three now after a seven-yard game. <laughs> and you can see this is kind of the, the the snowball momentum that Canton is able to build in so many of their games. They win a lot of games. They've won a lot of games this season by a lot of points, and this is how they do it. They start to snowball. They start to beat up on opposing defenses, and you're starting to see it right here. Oh, and look at that. Just, just literally shimmying through the offensive line, and the defenders is Bill Cherry, a big game. Yeah, it's rare to say a fullback gets skinny. They're usually a little bit bigger than the other <laughs> the other boys in the backfield, but Bill Cherry absolutely gets skinny there, shimmies through, breaks the tackle. Another big gain for Canton, and they're just moving the sticks at will. Yeah, with ease right now, both in the ground or on the ground and in the air, it's working perfectly for the classics. Momentum fully on their side. Motor City needs to come up with a stop here. Now a rollout. Patterson, pressure coming. He stands in. He throws. That pass just over the head of the intended target, Jack Wall. Incomplete. That was a, a perfect play, a perfect play call, a perfect route run by Jack Wall. The only problem is that Scar Patterson overthrew it by about five yards. Otherwise, that was an easy six points for Kim. That sure was. Second and ten. Three receivers now to the top of the screen for the classics a toss play to lee spin move tackled and that was a really good job of kaufman to not really be thrown off the spin move there and bring him down for a stop yeah it was good individual effort on the on the tackle there but something i'm noticing is that there's not a whole lot of congestion at the line of scrimmage right now for canton they're able to get a couple of yards downfield before there's even an interaction between uh a running back and and these defenders so Something that Motor City is going to have to tighten up. Wall goes in motion. Will he go that way? He Ooh. does, but they're going to say it was out of bounds. That was intended for Ryan Owens. Let's take a look at this replay to confirm here. That might be worth Motor City's second challenge Ooh. of the game. That's going to be awfully close. They've won one challenge. They could, they could challenge this one too, but that was a... Very close play, very dangerous throw by Scar Patterson. Yeah. Almost a huge momentum changer. Took a shot to the end zone, and they say Owens stepped out. So Rob Ems comes on to attempt his first field goal of the day. 26 yards. This one is up, and he sinks it. 10-point lead now for the Canton Classics. You know, as, as easy as that drive was for most of it, Motor City ought to be pretty psyched that they got away with just holding them to that field goal. That interception would have been huge, but holding them to a field goal, and this is still a two-possession game. This is no big deal. It's early in the game. Motor City can take a breath and still come back here. And we will see what the V8s have in store after this touchback that brings it out to the 20. Bank Michigan is your locally owned and managed community bank serving the great people of the Great Lake State with custom tailor-made deposit and loan packages since 1907. Stop by one of our offices or visit online at bankmichigan.bank. Bank Michigan, better thinking banking. 
Motor City now wanting to bank on getting a few points on this upcoming drive. We'll see what they can do. They start off ground game looking good. That is going to be critical to their success. Someone such as Rivera getting a good chunk of yardage on first down. Yeah, this is a good looking play on first down. Not a, not a huge gain by any stretch, but just a, a nice quick step for Rivera to get out there and get a quick, quick four yards on first down. Opens the playbook up as well on second down. A couple more options there. They keep it on the ground with their halfback tandem, BB Bullets. It's a few more. Third and three, a quick third down on the way after the Lacey tackle. Yeah, and this is the, the area where Motor City needs to improve. They need to keep drives going by converting on third down. It's okay to get these chunk plays as long as you convert on third down and keep the drive going. Toss play left side. Room to work by Rivera, and he gets just enough first down. Probably that stiff arm helped keep that alive. Yeah, that was a good play call. It was just kind of a one-on-one -on -one matchup there. Uh, Torneo Rivera against King Jamal. King Jamal is going to win most of those battles. Just a really talented tackling safety. But you're right. I think that stiff arm saved the first down and the drive for Motor City. Man in motion. That is the wide receiver, Shane Kaufman. Two men in the backfield with quarterback King Jackson. Handoff. Oh, bulldozing forward, Christopher Dean for four. And Dean might be the MVP of this backfield today. He's just looking more confident, more solid, and harder to bring down than anybody else that's touched the rock today. Interesting to see both of these teams go to their three-headed threats in the backfield today early and often. A toss play again to Christopher Dean. And I just love watching him run because he knows the impact is coming. He just lowers his shoulders and continues forward. Yeah, he's so good at protecting the ball, lowers his shoulder, knows it's coming. He's not trying to do anything super finesse uh, with, with a lot of finesse. He does everything with power, does everything with confidence, being able to know exactly where he wants to take his cuts. Just a really talented fullback. To this point, Christopher Dean, five carries for 34 yards. Third and two. They keep it on the ground, and Canton stuffs, I mean, completely stuffs the line and snuffs that one out. Monzuma on the stop. Dimitri Monzuma has had a couple of big tackles here in this game, and no, none bigger than that one. I mean, Motor City was starting to get a drive going, it felt like. They converted a couple of third downs, and now they're going to have to punt the ball back to Canton. And uh, that's just a, a huge play by this linebacking core. Canton has been absolute drive killers to this point for Motor City. Now, to punt once again, this one will be fielded and dropped at about the 32-yard line. And, you know, at this point, you know, it's something else to take into consideration here, John, is the fact that this Motor City defense not getting a lot of time to rest. They're going to be getting gassed soon. No, of course. I mean, we talked about it. Canton, Canton is number one in the league in time of possession. They just hold on to the ball. They wear defenses down. It's this momentum snowball effect. It's brutal. It is a wrecking ball that can really wear you down faster than I think you realize. The defense, though, has certainly done a good job of, of at to this point, keeping Canton maintained to just 10. We'll see what they do on offense. And that one... Oh, that was Wall just trying to adjust to make the grab as he was falling to the ground. Couldn't do it. Second down. Yeah, I give credit to Terrence Pearson for being there. Maybe get a hand in there. But, yeah, Jack Wall had to kind of turn around, twist his body, come back to that ball. Not the most perfectly thrown ball by Scar Patterson today. If he had caught him in stride, that would have been a huge game. Oh, Motor City really does get away with one there for just a moment as you see the shadows of the, of the blimp overhead on the field. And they keep it on the ground with Johnson running right side, and they're going to give him two. So, again, another important third down on the way for both these teams. Yeah, Robert Johnson, you typically don't see that. You see a little more decisive running from him usually. I think he thought he could get around the backside of that blocker and get something more. Instead, got pushed back, only got two yards on the play, setting up a long third and eight. Two receivers on either side for quarterback Scar Patterson, who rolls out. You know, he's looking deep. The pass complete right at the midfield line. Ryan Owens with a critical catch. 
That was an interesting play. One of the defenders on the front seven for Motor City kind of broke out wide to the flat and actually doubled. Uh, it looks like doubled Logan Lee out there as Logan Lee was actually trying to make a block. Instead, he could have had actually a pretty clean shot at Scar Patterson if he had ducked inside and tried to pressure him. Instead, he had enough time to get rid of that ball and complete it for a first down. Right at midfield, Canton continues their drive. That is Owens in motion out to the bottom of the screen where he will rest with two other receivers. Patterson again looking, throws right side, and that's just bobbled and dropped. That's a rare drop by Jack Wall. You don't always see that. Very rare. Very rare drop by Jack Wall. Very reliable target for Scar Patterson, we've said a few times. So that's one that he will uh, not be psyched to look at the tape on Tuesday morning uh, when they get back together and, and take a look at the game tape. But that's not going to happen very often for this tandem. Second and 10. Again, you see three receivers to the bottom of the screen. One up top this time. And Patterson looking to roll out. Has time. Throws over the middle. And there they go. They go right back to Jack Wall. And he says, I assure you, I won't miss this one. Yeah, absolutely. Just it's utmost confidence between quarterback and receiver there. Uh, even though Jack Wall missed that. Yeah, like I said, he's not going to miss that again. Great play. Even, even really nice coverage, actually, uh, by Kane Vasquez there on the play didn't matter it was a perfectly placed ball jack wall gets the first down yeah vasquez was was in there trying to snag that one out of the air trying to get his third int of the season wall wins that battle and it's a new set of downs for the classic they keep it on the ground with jonathan he's got room to run and he gets a cool five yards right off the bat yeah and it's just uh, another easy uh five yards it's just looking way too easy right now for Canton to get this kind of yardage on first down. Mm -hmm. Second and five as we're approaching the two-minute warning. As we said, a fast-moving game up to this point. They keep it on the ground. Logan Lee, spin move, shrugs another tackle off, gets to the 20, and a fresh set of downs for the Classics, who are again taking over. Yeah, they're not going to have to run another play here. They're just going to dominate the, the rest of the second quarter. Logan Lee with a really wonderful spin move to get some extra yardage there. And again, just a, this is this is the playbook. They're not deviating from it. It's just control, control, control. Two minutes left. You're watching the SFL on YouTube. Don't go anywhere. Can looking to control this final two minutes at the and at the very least come away with a field goal. But right now they are thinking six points as they are in command. The toss left side running room to run past the ten down to the five and Bill Cherry gets them very close to the goal line. A, a fullback sweep looking play that that has Bill Cherry not even touched until he gets to about the five-yard line. I mean, just a, I don't know. I've just been really impressed with the play calling, the blocking downfield. It's just been a, a really dominant game so far from Canton, and that's not surprising. This is what they've done all season. It is their bread and butter. And on first and goal right here, looking to punch it in with a minute 55 in this first half. Patterson, pump fake, stays on his feet, decides to run, and doesn't get, well, obviously doesn't get anything. He gets brought down instead, second and goal. Great tackle that time and great pursuit by Sammy Seatbelt in the third. Yeah, good play by Sammy Seatbelt to not really get deterred by that pump fake and, and, and what might have been going on downfield. He stuck with it and made sure that Scar Patterson did not get the scramble yard and she was trying to get there. John, that was the first time that we maybe have seen Patterson look rattled all day long. Yeah. Second and 10 on the ground to Johnson running with a head of steam. He gets some yards back, third and goal coming up. And this is a biggie right here. Yeah, it's huge. I mean, Motor City, obviously, the, 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 the big problem with them is they got to put points on the board. But it's going to be very, very important for them to get some momentum here by holding Canton to at least a field goal attempt. Three receivers at the top of the screen. Now make that four as Andrew Gibson joins them. Third and goal. What will Canton throw at him? They go to the air. The pass deflected incomplete. And 
That's going to bring up fourth down and a nice job of this Motor City team, again, knowing they needed a stop, needed to keep them out of the end zone. You know, I've been impressed with Canton's play calling all game until that game, until that play. They did not have a single one of their talented backfield in the game at that moment. I thought that was a mistake. Sending out five spread wide, tips you off, lets Motor City back up. So, yeah, good job for Motor City to hold them, but an interesting play call as well. Surprise indeed not going to the backfield. M's with the kick. It is good. They extend their lead by three more now, leading 13 to nothing. Canton Classics fans, the team needs your help. Van Lacey, the father of Evan Lacey, which the cornerback is named for and in his likeness, is raising the reward money to solve his son's murder from $8,000 to $20,000. The Classics have set up a GoFundMe account and would appreciate your consideration in donating or even just sharing the link in your social circles. Let's help Van keep his final promise to his son and bring peace to his family. Visit GoFundMe.com and search A Father's Promise. Now this one is touched back once again here in the end zone, so Motor City will bring this out to the 20-yard line and again let's let's you know give a call to the Motor City defense again making uh, an op an opportunity to keep it manageable for their offense they've got to get some points though for sure Motor City's just been they've been in most of the games that they've they've lost you know they've they've been fighting so this is not rare for them to be holding their own against a better opponent oh they keep it on the ground and that was just an absolute spear by Kevin Brackett, second and nine. They give him forward progress. Yeah, Bill Goldberg style, setting up mm -hmm. a jackhammer here in a second. That was a brutal hit. And this is what Canton does, too. They control the clock so much that unless you've got an explosive opposing offense, it's really tough to come back, especially with not much time left in the second quarter. Uh, this pass now complete. Some good offensive production, finally, from King Jackson as he connects with his wide receiver, or he's tied in. I believe that was Azami Mahata, and they quickly use a timeout. Yeah, that was Mahata. So now all three tight ends have gotten involved in this game so far for King Jackson. He's spreading it out, continuing what he always does. He likes to get a lot of different people involved in the offense's production. Remind me to tell you about the time that I met Bill Goldberg. Okay. I will. <laughs> His fist was the size of my head. Oh. First down now for Motor City. They go back to the air. Incomplete. That one intended for their tight end Phil Koss. And stops it stops the clock, which is, you know, like at least gives Motor City a chance to get another 30, 40 yards, give Caleb Richards a chance. He hasn't missed yet this season on field goal attempts. So if they give him a chance, they might put some points on the board. A long way to go and a short time to get there. We'll see what they can do. Now King Jackson pump fakes and well, gets absolutely obliterated. Number 69, L.L. Volt coming in and really giving him a charge. Yeah, L.L. Volt with a very nice tackle there. A big sack to send Motor City reeling. And they probably don't have to run another play, and I'd be surprised if they did. I don't believe that they will. Instead, they will let the clock run down, and we will get ready and head to the lockers for halftime in what has certainly been an interesting game. Motor City's defense doing the best they can. Canton, though, able to get 13 points up. As we go to our SFL halftime break, John, break this down for us. What have you seen this first half, and what do you need to see out of these teams for the second? Well, I would say that, you know, the, the stat line doesn't necessarily tell the whole story. I mean, this has been a dominant performance by Canton, but yet they're only up 13 to nothing, right? So the well, Motor City does have room here, especially if King Jackson can get comfortable and deliver some balls downfield. That's been the, the deficit here. We haven't seen King Jackson take a lot of chances. I think they're going to have to do that in the second. So for Canton, they've really run their offense to perfection. This is what they do. They control the clock with that backfield. This is their game plan. They have not deviated from it. It's been very impressive to see. Exactly, and an important note to mention, we have a critical drive coming up to begin this third quarter. 
uh, because it's going to set the tone for the day, really, as I believe it will be the Classics getting the ball back to start the second half. We welcome you back to Bank Michigan Stadium here in Detroit. My name's Cameron Duty. I'm with John Warren, Andrew Gibson, and Dakota Butts working the stats truck, and Cameron Irvine in the production booth. As we welcome you in, as we said, Canton will get the ball back, and Motor City will have to go on the defense immediately. We'll see what these two teams can come up with as the ball is in the air. And this one will be returned out of the end zone. That is Gibson who shoulders ahead and a nice return to the 28-yard line. Yeah, that was a good return. Uh, and I, I'm surprised that it brought it out, but it was a good choice because they're almost at the 30-yard line to get this drive started. As we said, an important drive right off the bat for both teams, Canton with an opportunity to extend their lead, Motor City having to come out and immediately worry about getting this top-ranked offense off the field. Oh, another rollout. That was a fake handoff and a rollout. Patterson to throw the pass is complete across midfield to Al Dillapri Sr., and they strike quick, don't they, John? Yeah, they do. Dillapri has been – he's just been very open in this game. Downfield – some kind of soft zones are opening up for this Canton uh, offense to exploit. And Scar Patterson just had all the time in the world to let that route develop. Dillapri catches another pass, and he's just been really the, the big difference maker, I think, downfield for this Canton offense. One play, one pass already into Motor City territory. The handoff now to Johnston. He bulldozes forward for eight. Yeah, and I, you know, you see, we, we talked earlier about how Canton just controls the line of scrimmage. This is kind of on both sides. I mean, I've, I've mentioned a couple times, there really has not been very many plays in this game so far where a, a running back or a quarterback for Canton has met in the backfield before just getting three, four yards downfield. They keep it on the ground with Johnson, and he's heating up, eh, ready to break a big one at any moment. He gets the first down there, but but you just have this sense that he continues to churn and navigate here his way through the line. Let's go to Cameron Irvine real quick for a game break. Cam, what you got? Thank you, Cameron. Baltimore's in Atlanta today, and they certainly look like they are getting their stuff together in the second half of the season. Atlanta loses Daly Holder in the back of the end zone wide open. Baltimore leads 14-3 as Canton continues their drive. Back to you. Well, you can't sleep on the Baltimore Vultures, that's for sure, at any point in time during the season. No, and I mean, you know, you look at you look at Motor City's record, 2-7. and seven, I, I think they're, that's about right. This team will be better, but they're also in a really tough division. Baltimore, D.C., and, of course, Canton. It's just a really, really tough division from the middle up. So it's, it's a yeah. tough place to play. Tough sledding, and this division is so stout right now with a lot of formidable opponents. And take a look at this. Patterson decides, nope, I'm going to take this myself. Gets right between the tackles and guards and gets the first down. Yeah, I mean, Max von Lynch, Jacques LePancake, Adam Chance, Gert Lord, Kira Kilgannon. This line is really good, and we're seeing how dominant they've been in a microcosm in this game. Patterson now rolling out. He wants to go for it all. He gets oh. a one-handed reception once again to Al Dillapri Sr. We've seen a couple of them. I think that one right there is your nominee for the nice hands catch brought to you by Retroid. Put a Retroid handheld in your hands and play the only video game with your player in it, SFL 4K23. Yeah, my Retroid starts to heat up and, and blink when uh, when it senses a great catch. Uh, and that was crazy. That was an amazing catch by Dillapri Sr. We've seen a couple of big ones so far in this game, and that was maybe the most impressive. This team right now brimming with confidence. They're on the goal line, and oh, my Ooh. goodness. They, they, I thought Patterson had it. They're going to mark him short, uh, really getting uh, comfortable with utilizing this QB sneak this second half. Yeah, because I, 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 like I've said, I mean, Motor City's just not been able to get the penetration in the backfield. This line has just been pushing people around. Second and goal, a mere inches from the promised land. Touchdown, Johnson. We knew it was coming, and they go right to him left side for six. 
And this is why I question the play call at the end of the half, where they put five wide. They didn't put anyone in the backfield. This offensive line has been so incredible in the run game all season, and especially in this game. You just have to give them a chance, I feel like, at this point on the field. We saw how easy that looked, and that was a, a great touchdown for Robert Johnson. And Canton's going to go up by three scores here. Yeah, M's with the extra point, and it is now 20 to nothing, an eight-play, 73-yard drive that took just a little over three minutes off the clock. And we talked about the importance of this, John, how important this opening drive would be for both these teams. Canton gets the upper hand. Yeah, and it puts King Jackson into a tough space, right? Because I think Rivera, it would have been great if he had gotten some stuff going. Christopher Dean had started to look like he was coming alive. But now King Jackson is going to have to start slinging this downfield. That's not really how this team is built. Jackson is built to do that. But a lot of his receivers are really just kind of possession receivers. They're going to have to take some shots downfield. And this Canton defense is going to be ready for that. Sutherland brings this one out, and Motor City will set up shop. An important note, a historical perspective to this game. Four meetings between the two teams coming into this today. Canton has won all four. They look prime for a fifth one. Unless Motor City can get something going here, get some points on the board. We haven't seen them yet in this third quarter, so we'll see what they come out with. On first and 10 from the 29, and they send her Anna Queen Jackson in motion. She goes to the top of the screen. And they keep it on the ground to Rivera, who gets four. That's kind of been the MO for them today. Run it on first down, see what you can get. Yeah, and they've and they've been okay with that. I mean, what I've said a couple times is that it, these chunk plays are, are not – necessarily bad if you can convert that inevitable third down it's just that they've been having some trouble doing that second and six again on the ground this time it's bb bullet charging forward and falls forward for a pretty good game there now again important third and short coming up they haven't been able to succeed here very often yeah it would not surprise me if they just try to pound this forward with christopher dean maybe Torneo Rivera, we'll see what happens here. They're in a big set, setting up for a run. We'll see which line gets the motion and again stopped. As we said, this isn't the first time today Kanye Rockefeller to end to stop that one, but we've talked about it. Third and one, third and inches, third and two, and the battle in the trenches has been won every time. But take a look at this. Motor City wanting to challenge the spot of that ball. I don't think they're winning this one, Cameron. I'm, I'm just going to say it now. I feel like Kanye Rockefeller got back there, moved Christopher Dean back. I like the play call. The execution was not there. Kanye Rockefeller knew it was coming, wrapped him up. I don't think they're going to win this challenge, but we'll see. Yeah, we'll take like a retroactive look at the play brought to you by Retroid. Once again, get your SFL console at GoRetroid.com. And I, I close. just tried. It is close. I think it's probably closer than what we thought. Got a couple of bodies in the way there that prevents us from just seeing exactly where the spot would be. Stands. And it stands. Yeah, we, we had a <laughs> feeling. You called it, John, that we thought that it was going to be short. And it is just short. And as I said, Battle of the Trenches, they can't de uh, that defensive line has won just about every time. Yeah, they have, and and it's just a, it's such a strategy that they've been so consistent about all year, both sides of the ball. It's been just a a stifling uh, team to play against. I mean, Canton's just so tough, top to bottom. Stifling, I think, is probably one of the most perfect words that I've heard to describe this Canton Classics defense. Now, with the return is, let's see, I believe that was Owens who gets upfield there. And uh, Gibson, rather, excuse me, who gets that one out to the 30-yard line. So good job of these special team boys as well, uh, putting the work in, getting some good return yards today. Yeah, now things get just kind of easy, I think, for Canton. I mean, Motor City has got to really prepare for them to just move the ball at will. It looks like they're maybe even setting up for a pass here. So interesting start to the drive. Let's we'll see if it's just a, a fake out or if they actually do pass the ball. Jack Wall in motion. And you take a look at the stat right there. They've scored on their last four possessions. That run goes for one. A nice stop at the moment there by Williams. Yeah, it was a good play by Motor City not to be faked out by the motion and the four, four receivers wide. 
it just makes more sense for Canton to start running the ball, running the clock down more. Motor City's got to be there, though. They've got to make those stops. They've got to be at the line of scrimmage. They've been dominated most of this game, but it's not too late to turn some things around. Dillard Priest Sr. in motion. A threat this entire game. We've seen the type of passes he has come up with. Patterson rolling out, no doubt looking to that side of the field, and he gets it to Jack Wall wide open for the first down. And somebody like Jack Wall, it's a surprise to see them that wide open. Yeah, a really, really good play fake. It obviously faked out some of the folks on the second line there. Uh, we, had a, we had a couple of linebackers and a safety kind of get faked out there. Jack Wall just gets way too open. I don't know how that happens just over there in the corner, and that's a big, big, big conversion. Move the ball, change field, uh, change the, uh, uh, you know, just really. Out of the field there, yeah. Exactly. And they get into enemy territory. They keep it on the ground with Lee, who gets five. And this is, as you said, this is the classic part of Canton, no pun intended, but this is their bread and butter. Ground and pound, and then hit you with something deep, keep the clock moving. I mean, the throwbacks is not just their uniforms today. I mean, this is a throwback style of football. Controls a line of scrimmage and lulls you into a sense of security and they can hit you Ooh. downfield. You know, you got to love the effort of these Motor City men trying to hurdle over the line to get to Johnson. Although that time, not enough, and he gets the first down. Yeah, it's not. And, and you know, again, time of possession is, is such a... a, a a weapon that can't wields with expertise. And this is another long drive. A long methodical drive, as you mentioned, continuing the clock to run. This time, Lee looked like he had some daylight opening up before getting wrapped up after a gain of four. Yeah, good job of Motor City to close in on that. He had, uh, he, you could see, you could kind of see it. He's preparing to evade that first tackle, and it's almost a guarantee for someone like Logan Lee, but they were able to converge on him in time to stop him for only four yards. Second and six, they give it to the big man, Bill Cherry, who bulldozes forward for another first down. Yeah, another another big first down conversion there. Bill Cherry having a really big game. I think this is probably, yeah, this is looking like his, his most productive game of the year, 45 yards on the ground that's a it's a huge day for him it is and you know this is his first year coming over from motor city so his return game here with the canton classics and having a big day and there there's a guy who we know is having a big day dillapree senior with another reception and i think all of dillapree's catches except for a couple that we've seen kind of in wide open space have been heavily contested and also very impressive. So even though he didn't get a first down on that, that eight yards was a tough one as he got hit almost immediately. Second and two, closing in on two minutes left in the third quarter. They again keep it on the ground to Robert Johnson. And you feel, as we said, you know, the head of steam coming at you and a first and goal on the way. It's just relentless. I, I, I don't know... That there are only a couple of teams I feel like in the league right now can really compete with Canton in terms of controlling the game. And it's just a, a, a super impressive squad. First time I'm seeing them this year firsthand, and they're just really, really good. The handoff, Logan Lee, and he walks in for the touchdown. Had to shrug a tackle there to make it look a little bit challenging, and Canton extends their lead. But again, like we've said, uh, these runners are not getting touched until two, three, four yards downfield. By then, they've already gotten ahead of steam. They're so good. Logan Lee, Robert Johnson are. They're, they're veterans. They can see things as they develop. They have enough time to make those adjustments, and it's just it's easy. It's easy, easy sledding for this Canton offense. Really impressive, complete game for them, and they're making this uh, blowout here in the third quarter. M's with the extra point, and he's had a nice day, so they extend the lead to 27, and there you go. That time of possession and the play's another nine-play drive. Huge. Yeah, huge, 70, 70 yards that they were able to march down the field, and, and again, that leaves Motor City, as you said, out of sorts because it's not the way they like to operate, but you pretty much got to have a gunslinger right now. 
Yeah, I, and King Jackson is up for it, but I don't know if the rest of his skill players are in the position to really help him out. Whoa, this could help. Ooh. Yeah, there you go. Absolutely a nice return. Just a little spark that they needed. That's Johan Sutherland, and he'll set him up nicely there starting from the 29. They need some individual effort. They need some good play calling. They need some aggressive play calling. I think, you know, if I'm if I'm the coach, if I'm putting on the headset, I'm kind of throwing the runs out the window, trying to get some receivers downfield. They've got some talent here. They don't have a lot of rocket burner downfield targets, but they have good targets that can catch balls in the middle, make something happen after the catch. So. They've got a chance here. It's not hopeless. They just got to start making it happen now. First and 10 from the 29 yard line as Jackson will now send her Anna Queen Jackson in motion. She goes to the top of the screen. Again, they keep it on the ground to Christopher Dean who has really been a bright spot for this team today after another seven yard gain. Yeah, so far he gets the MVP nod. If, if Motor City has given one out to the uh, an offensive player, Christopher Dean has been the bright spot here. Just tough running, tough to bring down, making all the right moves. Mm -hmm. Shadows drawing long here on the field as we wind this game down, headed to the fourth. But take a look at the fight here and Toronel Rivera doing everything that he can to get the first down and keep the drive sustained. Yeah, good blocking, too. It's one of the rare instances so far in this game where Canton looked a little bit out of sorts with the blocking scheme, and Rivera was able to uh, sneak, sneak through there for about four and a half yards. And on first down, they again stay on the ground, and that time, B.B. Bullets just trying to plow behind one of the offensive linemen there and nothing doing. Yeah, he's, again, a talented runner, but uh, when there's not a lot that's developing in front of him, he's got to make better decisions, more decisive cuts, get out from behind those blockers a little bit faster. Yeah, second and one, again, keeping it on the ground. Christopher Ding, look at that workhorse go. Just completely shrugs off tackles, knows he needs the first down, and he gets it. Christopher Dean putting this team on his back right now, 56 yards on the ground. And they've been an incredibly impressive 56 yards. I mean, six six yards per carry is you know, double his average for the season. But they've just been really tough runs, really impressive runs with how dominant Canton has been on both sides of the ball uh, at the line of scrimmage. Christopher Dean, bright spot for Motor City. There's a reason that guy leads the rushing unit with three touchdowns, and it's because of plays like that. Handoff. Again, that time, though, going nowhere is Rivera gets back to the line. I believe that they'll say forward progress gets him there before being brought down by Rockefeller. Yeah, Rockefeller just reading that the whole way. He gets up there as fast as he possibly could, converged on the ball. They're so good at that, converging on a ball carrier. And that brings us to the end of quarter number three, ladies and gentlemen. Canton in the driver's seat at the moment. You're watching the SFL on YouTube. We'll be right back. The of the Simulation Football League is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or account of the game without the express written consent of the league office is prohibited. APM Music is unrivaled music to bring your stories to life, inspiring every production with the world's most robust and constantly refreshed music collection, state-of-the-art technology, and world-class customer service. APM Music is the official soundtrack of the Simulation Football League. And to explore their library and to find the perfect tracks for your projects, visit apmmusic.com. That past attempt falls incomplete, and again, third down and ten is what we're looking at here for the V8s. Yeah, it's so tough for King Jackson. Yeah, Canton knows that they've got to get the ball downfield. And these are good receivers, but not when there are four Canton defenders in the area. Four Canton defenders who all are capable of snagging one back, mm -hmm. taking it for a pick six. That's dangerous territory indeed. They know they got to go to the air here as well. And they do overhead, but we're going to say... I believe there's a little bit of interference there, a little bit of extracurricular activity as the call goes past the interference, and Motor City's going to get a break. 
Yeah, I, I thought that ball was actually overthrown, but the reason I thought it was overthrown is because the receiver was tackled before the ball got there. So that, that, that was a, probably yeah. a pretty good call. Uh, not uh, The defender there not giving, that was Diedrich Law, not giving uh, Shane Coffin enough space to get to that ball, get to the spot. So good call, moves the sticks, and Motor City got maybe a little bit of life penalty. It's a big one. Uh, Mo- uh, Canton's usually a little more disciplined than that. Motor City, as you said, now looking at a chance to put some points on the board, but just as soon as you say it, King Jackson completely swallowed up by Mike All. Mike All, that is his second sack of the season, just got back into the backfield very quickly. These defensive ends are actually not the sack masters on this Canton team. That interior line is actually a little more prolific in that area, but Mike All getting back there, spinning King Jackson to the ground and making this a, a very tough second and 16. One step forward, two steps back. That has been kind of the soundtrack of the night for Motor City. And with that, possibly pushed out of field goal range as well. We'll see what they can do here as Jackson again to throw. That pass is complete by far the best pitch and catch of the entire day for Motor City. And it's Shane Kaufman with the reception. Yeah, King Jackson with the Shane Kaufman on that pass interference play. Goes back to him in this one. You can see just the talent, the raw talent of King Jackson, how fast that ball is. He's got one of the the fastest fast balls in the league, zipped right to uh, Shane Kaufman right there, converting on that long second down. So good job for Jackson and Motor City. To the air again, that time over the middle, just a quick little drop off and and I would I would consider that a nice play indeed. Some positive yards by Guy Clawson. Yeah, for sure. I think anything positive, obviously the time is a factor, but these positive uh, plays is really what they need. And getting Jackson any sort of rhythm, even if they're short passes, I think is a good thing. Second and five, tight formation again. They keep it on the ground that time with B.B. Bullets, who gets a couple and another important third down on the way. Would we say this is four down territory? I like to think so. But then again, John, you know, they may, if they don't convert, they may want to just take the three. What do you think? Well, they have an automatic field goal kicker, but they're down by, by four scores at this point. I think they've got to go for it on fourth down if it does get to that point. So I'm looking for two plays here. You don't necessarily have to convert on this one, but definitely set up for a fourth down and manageable. Third and two, hoping to avoid a fourth down conversion attempt, and they are not going to get it again on third and short. Completely stopped, and that time it's by DJ Kilgannon. Yeah, and it does look like they're going to put in Caleb Richards here for the attempt. Not what I would do. I think that's four down territory. But that is just kind of the way the story has been all day. They go get the third and short. They're not able to convert. The kick is up and good for Caleb Richards, who gets Motor City on the board after a 12-play drive. Of course, aided there by that defensive pass interference. But nevertheless, good to get on the board, good to get that zero off the scoreboard at home. For sure, and it turns into a three-possession game, although I would say it's a long-shot three-possession game. They're going to need three touchdowns, three two-point conversions to tie the ball game if they are able to hold Canton uh, on uh, on these subsequent drives. And this one is returnable, and so we will see a good return there getting out to the 24-yard line by Lund. Yeah, but you typically don't see a six foot four, two hundred and thirty-five pound return man. But Bob Lung is kind of the the, the guy they look to when uh, Andrew Gibson is not in the game. So yeah, that's a, a impressive return, even if it was only to the twenty-four yard line. So operation run the clock out for Canton commences right now. It may have actually commenced there at the end of the third quarter. Definitely wanting to control the major portion of this fourth quarter and get out of here with the W and a playoff berth, which is where they're headed. Johnson now head of steam, another stiff arm, and a gain of seven. This guy has just gotten better as the game has went on. Yeah, and I think the mark of a truly great team is one where you know exactly what they're going to do, and so does the other team, and it doesn't matter. They're they're still going to be able to do it anyway. 
Robert Johnson's just been getting anything he wants. And like you said, he's been improving as the game has gone on. 59 yards on 11 attempts and a touchdown. Third and four now coming up. It's a big stop in the backfield there. Again, one of the only get draw, one of the only plays. Motor City has very clearly gotten into the backfield, caused some penetration issues with this offensive line for Kemp. To throw, pass complete. We're going to see what the flag is. We've got a little bit of laundry on the field the second time today. We'll hear what the ref says. Yeah, face oh. mask on that catch. Jillipri is still able to snag that, but then was face masked after the catch. So that's going to move the sticks to keep the clock running. They get Sammy Seatbelt the third with that penalty there. And you take a look at Dillapree's day, I tell you, making a good case for player of the game, which we will call in the post-game wrap-up indeed. But he goes over the 100-yard mark there, as they say. Second and nine coming up now after a good defensive stop. Again, this Motor City defense, they keep fighting. Uh, that's Rodney Panani on the stop. Yeah, Panani, one of the really bright players on this Motor City uh, V8's defense. He's just been great all season. Second and nine. And we see motion this time coming from uh, left to right. There is Gibson. We've seen him in motion a couple of times in this game. And another rollout by Patterson. He's done a lot of that in this game. With that pass complete, another pitch and catch to Dillapri. And he is on his way to the 20 steps out. After crossing the 20-yard line, and this guy has just been completely unstoppable. And let's be honest, way too wide open. Way too open, and it's always it's always seems to he always seems to be open on these rollout plays where Scar Patterson gets kind of out into space, has a lot of time because Motor City's just not been able to get to him, and Dillapri is just able to run himself open on these kind of soft zones. That time, even getting a great screen once he caught the ball able to go around a blocker and get a ton of yards. So 150 yards for Dillapri and Canton's just rolling again. Have a day, Dillapri. Handoff now to Johnson, who comes forward before getting met. Like a head on car crash there before getting taken down <laughs> by King Rashid. Well, that's the thing is Motor City's always fighting, right? I mean, they're, they're still hitting hard. They're still laying the lumber. It's just, it's a mostly fairly young and inexperienced team. They have a lot of rookies on this team, a lot of transfers from other teams. They're just kind of getting started with their chemistry, and you see some of that, but they still play hard. They always play hard. Look at that stat there for De La Pre Senior today 151 reception yards. That is the 4K23 career high. And again, you know, we can't say enough about his performance today and for this offense as a whole, firing on all cylinders. Now, third and five coming up. Motor City wanting to get Canton off the field with, if anything, a field goal attempt. Less if they can have their say about it. Oh, roll out here. Take a look at this pressure coming. Patterson shakes it off, stands on his feet, throws to the end zone for the touchdown to guess who? Al Dillapri Sr. How in the world did that happen? That is an absolutely ridiculous play. Scar Patterson caught dead to rights in the backfield, one of the only times we've seen him pressure. Rodney Panani almost took him down, could not do it. Just got enough time and delivered a ball in traffic to Dillapri, who comes away with it, even after being met by Mark Kaufman in the end zone. That was just an unreal play and an exclamation point at the end of this sentence for Canton today. A beautiful play, a, a very exciting a sequence of events for Canton and their fans as they extend their lead. The extra point is good by M's. 34-3 is the lead with 442 left in the fourth. And again, for the second straight season, a playoff berth is inevitable right here. Uh, and, and let's just talk for a minute about what that means for this team heading into a, assuredly a postseason now. Yeah, and, and like I said, I mean, th there are teams in the SFL that have been very impressive. You know, Florida obviously is still right there. But in terms of dominating both sides of the ball the way they have on the front seven, Canton just looks unbeatable to me in a lot of ways. Scar Patterson just takes care of the ball. Can't talk more about uh, what kind of game he's had, what kind of season he's had. 65 yards, 65% completion percentage, 141 QBR. 
this is just kind of his game. And when the backfield is so good and this offensive line is so dominant, you could do that. And so Canton is going to be very dangerous in the postseason. They're going to be happy with this playoff berth and, and maybe get some help and win the division uh, tomorrow. That's right. Their eyes will be, and all of our eyes actually, will be on that D.C. game tomorrow. We'll take a look at the Sunday schedule in just a moment to give you the full rundown. First and 10 now for Motor City, again, wanting to try to put some points on the board. As you mentioned, a young team continuing to learn, continuing to grow. That pass is intercepted, going the other way. A great snag out of the air by Diedrich Law. He's had a good day, and that's probably just the icing on the cake. I saw on the cake for Diedrich Law. Just, you know, it's it's a play that King Jackson would like to have back, but they're trying to get something downfield. I liked the idea to get Hirana Queen Jackson involved. I feel like we have not called her name enough in this game, but it just wasn't the right choice in that moment. Diedrich Law with a pick, and now Motor City is really on the ropes. Obviously, 31 points down. Canton can really just kind of get things going on the run game, run this thing out, and head to the locker room. First down from the Motor City 31-yard line. You expect them to keep it on the ground, and they do. Of course, that's a nice job of the defense getting in there to make a stop. Still fighting, still trying to prevent points. That's Terrence Pearson on the tackle. Now, let's take a look at tomorrow's SFL action. It's headlined by Vancouver and D.C., just as we mentioned. Two teams currently in the playoff picture. That starts at 6.30 p.m. Eastern, plus action around the league, including Carolina and Louisiana, Los Angeles and San Diego, in Jacksonville and Seattle. For the full weekend schedule, visit simulationfl.net. A lot of exciting games to be featured tomorrow as well. This one, again, as we said, staying on the ground. They give that one to Cherry. He loses a yard, but right now the name of the game for Coach Donaldson and company is just run the clock out. Yeah, just run the clock out. Get get back to the locker room. You've got you know another couple games left on your schedule this year. Canton is at home against San Diego on the road against Florida in a week 13 matchup that I think everyone has circled on their calendars and then uh, back at home against Jacksonville. So a couple of very winnable games, I think, and then that huge game against Florida that should really help us figure out who is the cream of the crop in the SFL. As you said, when we've had circled for quite a few weeks now and the more that these teams play as, as well as they do, it just continues to build the hype. Uh, a good run that time on third down. It's not going to be enough, though. It's going to be fourth and inches after the run by Logan Lee. Yeah, and for Motor City, I mean, it, it's, it really is a lot about kind of looking for next season, right? I mean, they've got Carolina and Denver. I think two pretty winnable games, but they've got to just find their identity. I feel like that's something that they have not yet done with – the young leadership of King Jackson. They need to put some weapons around him and I think complement his play style. They will do that. It just hasn't happened this year. This is a good young team. The more they play together, the more weapons they add. They should be a force to be reckoned with in years to come. M's now with another field goal. A great job. He has been automatic today. 37 to 3 they go up leading by 34 and again you know not much more you can say about him just a steady kicker and has done his part the entire night through a, an interesting point to mention here it's actually been as we take a look at the the chat in youtube it's been alluded to a couple of times and and this is worth noting motor city may be out of it as far as winning the game today but they still have something that they would like to say, maybe to put a notch in their belt, and that would be to get to double digits. Nobody has done that yet on the Canton Classics this season. Yeah, which is, it seems impossible, right? Yeah, SFL eight weeks in, uh, nine weeks in. No team has been able to put up double digit points. Uh, Motor City could do that. It would be a nice little notch to say, hey, we took this dominant team and we put up double digits. Could be a nice little feather in their cap headed into the last couple games of the season. Uh, moral victory, you know, uh, uh, certainly something that this young team would love to build on. Now, Jackson, to throw, the pass is complete. Tackled in the open field. They go no huddle. We kind of expected it here as we approach the two-minute warning. Roll out by Jackson. Plenty of time. He throws that pass off the hands of the intended target. Third and five coming up. That will stop the clock. 
Yeah, I, I don't I don't love talking about moral victories, especially with kind of you know dominant winning teams. But when you're talking about a team like Motor City, yes, losing record or young, I do think you can latch on to things like that, head into the offseason feeling good about aspects of your of your offense, of your team. So yeah, I totally agree. They could end up doing that if they put another six, put another seven on board against Canton. And the defense, though, continuing to be smothering there, bringing up a fourth down. You know that they are probably going to stay out there and try to attempt it anyway, see if they can convert. And why not? Like we said, it's about this team developing, continue to grow. A lot of rookies, a lot of youngsters on this team. And as you said, any kind of forward momentum that you can get, well, you know, you got to take that and, and run with it. Man in motion now, that is Hurana Queen Jackson. Three wide receivers now to the bottom of the screen as they look to convert on this fourth down. The throw of the pads over the head of the intended target, and the Canton Classic defense again does their job. That's Durr who is in on that stop. Yeah, it just wasn't a great, well-placed ball, even though it kind of looked a little bit like that pass interference call earlier against Shane Kaufman, but... They decided that was a bang-bang play, probably the right call there. And, uh, you know, it, it, I think King Jackson probably had some better options, but it's so tough. I mean, they're asking so much of this rookie, and he's still developing his decision-making. Um, Canton takes over, and they should be able to run this thing out. Two minutes and 21 seconds left in the game here tonight. The handoff to Johnson again, turning sideways to squeeze through the linemen and the defenders, and he does so, gets a gain of three, and that will probably head down to the two-minute warning, I would think, John. Yeah, they don't have to run another play. I don't know why he would. Uh, we just got a quick update from the other game in action right now. Baltimore up 28-9 to against the Swarm. So another dominant team right now in the North Division. Baltimore seems to be kind of hitting their stride at the right time. They could be dangerous headed into the uh, playoffs. Yeah. Two-minute warning here in Motor City, Detroit, Michigan. Canton leading decisively. We'll see what the final two minutes has in store for us, SFL, here on YouTube. Oh, the fake. They go to the air. They go to the end zone. Adela Priest Sr. again, touchdown. Just when you thought we had seen all the scoring we were going to, they said, nope. Nope, I got my man Dillipri wide open down the field. You know, I'm not a running up the score guy. I, I, I don't buy into the idea that uh, that's a thing. I think, you know, when you're a pro, when you're in the SFL, stop, you know, make a stop. So uh, Canton getting their offense and more of a rhythm, I, I like it. I don't mind it. Try to get some more points on the board. Try to get your players experience to put points on the board. Canton's been doing it as, better, as, as good as anybody so far this season. Dillapree with another touchdown. Just a, a complete game and a complete team. Tacking on another extra point, and the score now 44-3. to and, and let me ask you, John, I'm going to put you on the spot here, but I gave you some preparation anyway. Uh, <laughs> as far as the games that we have coming up tomorrow, which one are you looking the most forward to? Oh, gosh. I mean, in terms of games tomorrow, I, I, I've got I, I've got a couple games on my radar. Obviously, that D.C. game is a huge one. They're hosting uh, Vancouver. I think that's a really huge game to look at. Uh, I, I'm also just interested in Jacksonville, Seattle from a, 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 a game style standpoint. I'm really interested in seeing those two teams collide. But D.C. is obviously one of the most interesting teams in the league right now. I want to see if they can hold court, get a win, and keep Canton from clinching the division. Jackson's pass incomplete. and You did a very good job answering that on the spot, John. I appreciate that. <laughs> I was just looking at the list, and I, I thought I would get your opinion on that, of which one you were most excited about. I, I've got the pleasure to be on the play call there between Carolina and Louisiana as well. So, so that'll be good. Looking forward to that one. And and again, good action for the rest of the weekend here for the Simulation Football League. As we said, March Madness indeed, but we've got plenty of madness over here, enough that you won't want to turn the channel. That pass complete, a really nice route, one of the best run routes by Johan Sutherland of the entire game. Well, to your point, though, talking about the other games on the slate, I mean, this is really my favorite time of the year uh, okay. for the SFL. You, you just got teams in contention 
battling for position, battling to clinch. And then you have spoilers. I mean, we've seen it every single season. Some spoiler comes in, has a huge game against a team that's contending. It's just really exciting action. And, and so a lot of good games coming up. In the Indeed. Next few Indeed, and a good job right there offensively by Motor City getting some plays together. Another reception, and they will continue to burn their timeouts and move the ball down the field. Um, and again, you know, we it's not been lost on us the importance of a a, a a good end to the game, honestly, for a young team. Like, it's like we said, it's all about building momentum, building maturity, and, and so that's why they continue to fight. That's why they continue to play as they are. Nobody in the backfield now for Motor City. They'll send them all deep, and the pass intercepted and going the other way. That's Lacey. Lacey has nobody in front of him. To the 15, to the 10, to the 5, and touchdown, Evan Lacey. That puts the cherry on top of a game that has been total domination by the Canton Classics. Well, they've added uh, three or four exclamation points to the one that they already put on this game a uh, quarter and a half ago. Uh, Evan Lacey just reading that the entire way, picking it off, and absolutely no one touched him. This is true dominance. I mean, once it gets away from you, it really gets away from you. I don't think Motor City is going to end up putting those double digits on Canton, just stifling any sort of momentum that Motor City starts to build. What a team. What a game. The third interception for Evan Lacey this season. And I got to believe Rob M's leg is going to be getting tired eventually there after another extra point. 51 points on the board tonight for Canton. Um, by far one of the most dominant performances on offense that we have seen out of this team all year. Yeah, Ems is definitely going to be uh, booking an extra 30 minutes on the massage table uh, for his thighs, I feel like. Just getting a workout every few minutes, he must be... Mm. sipping some Gatorade going, well, I guess I got to get back at, back out there and kick an extra point. So it's huge. Ice baths for sure later on. Third career touchdown for Lacey, and that puts them up, as we said, over the 50-point mark. That is the first time all season that they have crossed that threshold. So, you know, folks, if you got Canton coming up on your schedule, look Ooh. out. They are – they're primed right now, red hot indeed. They are primed. I mean, that Florida game, everyone circled Florida – has had some come from behind victories, including last week's uh, against Atlanta. And uh, I'm going to be really looking forward to those two teams facing off. It may not be the uh, only time they face off uh, down the down the pipe here. So two really dominant teams coming up. Canton, Florida, two of the most dominant teams in the league. Definitely looking forward to that. Canton, though, I, I just don't I don't know who's beating them right now. They just have so much momentum on their side. And really, we haven't even yet to see the team get rattled. If, we, if we're going right. to be honest about it, they've been in such control. That will be interesting to see who can stand up and do that. That path complete. Oh, look at there. The receiver turning the corner and gets a couple of extra yards. I believe that was Sutherland again. Second and two coming up. Let me tell you real quick my Bill Goldberg story. Yeah, Since I brought this Yeah, Absolutely. that's right. We mentioned him earlier uh, in the game for some of you just tuning in, some of the wrestling like spears that was going on out there. I had a chance to meet him at an automobile race that he was actually at. And he was just there as a fan actually in the merchandise tent, if you will, just looking around kind of doing his own thing and I thought to myself should I approach Bill Goldberg I mean I watched wrestling my whole life right as we got a penalty on the field and we'll come back to that in in just a moment after we get a call pass interference so this drive will be extended they get the defense with their second PI of the game I believe yeah it's a good call yeah so Back to the story. So uh, I, I, I've watched wrestling my entire life. The guy looks menacing. You know, he played football for the University of Georgia, and his kid is actually going to play for Deion Sanders at Colorado now. Actually, I found that out the other day. And uh, he couldn't have been nicer. I mean, just the coolest guy, one of those things that you always want to meet, you know, the celebrities and hope that they're as good as you would expect them to be. Total classy guy. We took a picture and another first down right there by Motor City as this clock continues to run. And like I said, his fist, he said we're going to look like we're going to we're going to punch each other is what he wanted. Like Kind of like we're uh -huh. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was great. And again, his fist, the size of my head. Incredible. <laughs> Motor City continuing to roll here on this drive, the best-looking drive of the day for them. Primed to get some points. 
This pass off the hands of the intended target, second and 10 as we cross under the minute mark of this game. But, uh, yeah, I thought I'd throw that out there since I alluded to it earlier. And that's always pretty cool when you get a chance to meet someone such as that. That's a great story. I, yeah, I've never, I've never met Bill Goldberg. I, I've uh, met a few wrestlers in my time. Saw, saw, I, but the, the illusion of wrestling was broken when I went backstage and saw Ted DiBiase playing cards with Hacksaw Jim Duggan when I was a kid. Oh I was God. like, y'all aren't supposed to be friends, but they were. So but they was, were. But they were. <laughs> it's wah, like wah. pulling the yeah, pulling the curtain back on. Oh all, yeah. Right? Uh-huh. Yeah. Mark Gronick there with another sack on King Jackson. They have to spike the ball soon after to stop the clock. And it's fourth and 15 for Motor City's last stand here. Yeah, Motor City, you know, I'm, I'm feeling it, right? They could get a they, big conversion here. Maybe they put up seven, break the, break the streak for Canton. We'll see. Well, that's not going to do it, it will it? On the ground. And with that, the day is done. Job well done for Canton here. They will just run this clock out, and and they'll head back to Ohio with another W under their belt. Yeah, and I, you know, we alluded to it before. They're wearing these throwbacks, very, very cool Leatherheads throwbacks. And this team is a throwback in a lot of ways. I mean, they just have designed their entire team around dominating this line of scrimmage, even though this – this line still has you know has one rookie on it, but this backfield is so talented. This team is so geared to dominating that line of scrimmage. It's just a throwback to kind of yesteryear, and it's a formula that works, and, and we're seeing it working to great effect this season and, of course, in this game. And, and truly enjoyable to watch. As you said, if you like the throwback style of football, ground and pound, you know, where the running back, you think about, you know, the 60s, the 70s, even in the 80s, even parts of the 90s before it was quarterback centric as it has come to be known at times. You know, this classic team, you know, they, they rely on the halfback tandems and the fullback, and then they get you deep when you're looking for the run. And, of course, a stifling defense. As the final seconds tick away here in Detroit, 51 to 3 is going to be the victory for the Canton Classics. They punched their ticket to the playoffs, and with help tomorrow with a DC loss, they could clinch the North Division. John, give us your final thoughts. Also, give us uh, your player of the game as if we didn't already know. <laughs> well, yeah, Canton just absolutely dominating line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. We've talked about it a bunch. This front seven on defense was really dominant all game against a backfield that has shown flashes of of some brilliance. Christopher Dean on Motor City side having a great game. But really that was the only bright spot for Motor City. This is just full domination for Canton. As dominant as they were on the ground and at the line of scrimmage, I'm giving today's game ball to Al Dillapri Sr. who had an absolutely ridiculous game. Nine catches, 185 yards, two touchdowns, including that absolutely phenomenal play where Scar Patterson evaded a sack and delivered it downfield. So just a really dominant game all the way around. You can see it on the scoreboard. You can see with your eyeballs. Great game for the Canton Classics to go back home in front of their home fans. Canton wins their fifth battle of the Golden Dog Bone. Folks, for Andrew Gibson and Dakota Butts in the stats truck and Cameron Irvine in production, I've been with John Warren. It's been a pleasure, my friend. My name is Cameron Duty, and we thank you for watching the Simulation Football League on YouTube. Congratulations to the Canton Classics punching their ticket to the